Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Plante part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Yes, I think we spoke a lot about chlorophyce. So let us in a similar way look about the other two classes that is pheophyce and rhodophyce. So the next one we will talk about is pheophyce. So pheophyce are the brown algae. So why are they brown in color? It must be because of some specific pigment which gives it gives it a brown color. So we will see that. Talking about habitats, they also prefer marine habitats. They can be branched or filamentous. So let us look at some examples of brown algae. Laminaria, fucus, dictyota. These are some of the examples of a brown algae. So here again, if you look at all these three structures, how, how do they look like? Even though they do not have a specific root or a stem or a leaf, but if you actually look at them, it, it gives you a branched appearance, right? Here you can see it, it looks as if there are some branches. Here also you can see look, it looks like some branches. Here it looks like some leaf-like structure, but nothing is well differentiated. That is why they are all known as thallus. So let us talk about the structure of pheophyce. Again, talking about structure, cell wall is a very important part. So here cell wall is made up of cellulose. Again, here also the cell wall will have an outer covering. Like in chlorophyce, the outer covering was made of pectin. Here the outer covering is made up of algin. Now algin has a very good significance. Algin is often used in food. You remember I was talking about the significance of algae when I told you about agar. I told that it helps in preparation of ice creams and jellies. So this is what that is. That agar is nothing but it is made up of this algae. So algae plays a very important role in food. Chloroplast again is seen in different shapes in different species. It is also present. So what are the pigments? So what are the different types of pigments present in a pheophyce? Chlorophyll A, C, carotenoids and xanthophylls. So now since they have all these pigments, due to the presence of all these pigments, they are generally brown in color. So their brown color is because of the presence of these carotenoids, xanthophylls and even in xanthophylls it has got a special pigment which is known as fucoxanthin which gives it a brown color. Here food is stored in the form of complex carbohydrates. As you saw in case of chlorophyce, also the food was stored in the form of starch and sometimes proteins. Here food is stored in the form of complex carbohydrates like laminarin. Laminarin is an example of a complex carbohydrate. Significant organelles present here are plastids, vacuole, nucleus. So as you know, the, all these things are obviously there inside the cell. Talking about the structure of the plant body, there are three important parts of the plant body. That is the hold fast, style and frond. So if you look at the plant body, this is how the plant body looks like. And this structure, a stalk like structure is known as the style. Hold fast is the one which holds it to the substratum. It is like a, it is not exactly a root, but you can say that it is a substitute of root. It actually helps it to hold to the base. So that is hold fast. That is why it is known as hold fast because it actually holds it. And frond is nothing but the leaf like structure. So this frond is uh, the photosynthetic organ actually. It is the leaf like structure and it consists of chlorophyll. So this is the photosynthetic organ. So this is a, a rough picture of the structure of pheophyce. Let us look at the life cycle of a pheophyce. Here also, here it involves succession of haploid and diploid phases. So here also we have a haploid phase and again there is a diploid phase. So one is followed by the other and it follows each other in a cycle. So let us look at, so let us look at this life cycle. Now let us suppose here also we will have a thallus that is a mature pheophyce. This thallus will give rise to the gametes. Now these gametes will undergo fusion. Fusion of the gametes will give rise to the zygote. And this zygote will actually form a multicellular 
diploid structure and this multicellular diploid structure will undergo meiosis and will form spores and these spores will germinate to form the thallus. So here again if you see which is the diploid phase this is the diploid phase. So here you see this is an additional phase which is introduced in Pheophyce which was not there in Chlorophyce. In Chlorophyce the zygote was the short lived diploid phase but here the zygote gives rise to a multicellular diploid phase and the thallus is the haploid phase. So this is the haploid phase and this is the diploid phase. So you see here there is a succession of the two phases. Hep diploid phase gives rise to haploid phase. Again haploid phase gives rise to the same diploid phase. Again the diploid phase gives rise to haploid phase and so on. So that is why it says that this life cycle involves succession of haploid and diploid phases. Okay. With this we end our discussion on pheophyse. Let us now talk about rhodophyce. Rhodo is from the term red. So these are the red algae. Talking about their habitat, they have marine habitat, mostly fresh water or salty water as well. They occur both on the surface as well as deep inside water. On the surface of the water also you can sometimes find red algae, a red colored thing seen on the surface of water that is red algae. Cell wall made up of cellulose here also. Chlorophyll A, D and phycoerythrin are present. So the pigments here are A, D and phycoerythrin. So you saw in all the three types of algae, the pigments which were present were totally different. In chlorophyce it was chlorophyll A and B. In pheophyce it was chlorophyll and other than chlorophyll it has xanthophyll where fucoxanthin gave it the brown color. And here it is phycoerythrin. Food here is stored in the form of Floridian starch. Like in case of uh, Pheophyce, food was stored in the form of complex carbohydrates. Here it is stored in the form of Floridian starch. See, I am not getting into the detail of what is Floridian starch, what, starch, what is its structure or what is laminarin because they involve all complex chemical structures. So you, you should only know in what form the food gets stored inside these organisms. If you want to look at the examples of Rhodophyce, it would have polysiphonia, porphyra, gracilaria. These are some of the examples of red algae. So you remember I used this term gracilaria before when I was talking about the significance of algae. I was talking about agar. So I was telling that agar was obtained from an algae called gracilaria. So this, this is gracilaria. So if you see it is red in color. Now talking about the life cycle of rhodophyce. The life cycle of rhodophyce is very very similar to the brown algae except that they do not have flagellated gametes. That means in case of uh, brown algae the gametes which we, are, we talk about like as I said the thallus will give rise to gametes then the gametes will fuse. I mean it was something like this right. There is a thallus the thallus will give rise to the gametes and then the gametes will fuse together this will form a zygote and then this zygote will form a multicellular diploid phase and then this will undergo meiosis to form the spores and then the spores will germinate to form the thallus again. So the gametes here with the gametes involved in the life cycle of a red algae they are non-flagellated that is they are non-motile they cannot move so that is the only difference between the life cycle of a red algae and the life cycle of a brown algae so i think with this we have ended our discussion on algae so we saw what are algae what are the characteristics of algae what are the different types of algae based on the different types of pigments present inside them and we also talked about the modes of asexual reproduction and the modes of sexual reproduction in algae and all its types so with this we covered one topic that is we covered the thallophytes so the next section which we will we are going to discuss is the bryophytes now before we start with bryophytes, let us make one more thing clear again. Algae, blue-green algae and algal protests. These are all these three things we have covered by now. We have spoken about 
uh, blue green algae when we while we were studying about monera we spoke spoke about the algal protists when we were talking about the kingdom protista and today while we were talking about the plant kingdom we spoke about algae so please remember that all these even though they are all algae but they fall under different kingdom because of their different characteristics so these which you see here on screen that is spirogyra eulothrix volvox all these things fall under plant kingdom they are all either green algae or brown algae or red algae and they all fall under plant kingdom when i talk about some of the brown and red algae which have more characteristics similar to the protists so they fall under the protists kingdom here we spoke about the dinoflagellates and the diatoms right so they fall under the protist kingdom whereas when i talk about the blue green algae that is the cyanobacteria they fall under the monera kingdom because they resemble a lot of similarity with the monera kingdom so even though they are all algae but because of their different characteristics and different behavior they have been put under separate kingdoms so i just gave this slide for a confirmation so that you do not get confused that whether algae is a plant or algae is a monera or algae is a protist so different types of algae fall under different types of kingdom thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors Thank you once again.